Hey, what's up, man? So today we got two pistols in the building, man. A Florida legend in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good with you, man? Not much, two pistols, man. Hey, I got to say, man, from all my days back in the past reading Ozone magazines, man, looking at World Star Hip Hop, man, this is this is one of my favorite interviews I'm ever going to do. I can tell you that, man, because your run was a legendary one. You know what I mean? Love, love, love. I appreciate that. Hell yeah. Now, for a lot of people who are who are going to be checking this out, I want you to, before people get down to the, you know, what you've done and your accomplishments and things like that, I want to hear a little bit about you in the early days and get a little bit of your history and how you became a musician and how we come to know Two Pistols today. Uh, I mean, early, earlier days, I mean, I played a lot of a lot of football. That was, I mean, I, I played football, but <clears throat> I mean, I, I played around on bikes a little bit too, you know, uh, a motocross side. Uh, just around the neighborhood, not nothing crazy, you know, racing a bunch of places and none of that. But really, the uh, football was, was, was the the tickets. You know, uh, everybody expected me to to do that like long term. Me, me, really play football, really go to school. And I mean, a lot of dudes that I played against, they did. You know, some of them went to the league. You know, a lot of them went to college. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I had a little girl in, in high school, so it kind of like you know. Um, through me, I guess, to, to, to the fatherhood side of it pretty early. So, um, I'm also focused on that when it came to my senior year. I actually had a, my, my, the summer of my junior year. So, like, my, my direction of, of ball kind of like got slighted a little bit. And, you know, I, I had to care for her. So kind of dove in the streets a bit, you know, and, and, and got tangled in streets and, and music. And, you know, what I mean, I, I felt like, I had to make it one way or another, man. I couldn't really do the, the the football aspect how I wanted to. Plus, a lot of people was like, at during that time, you you were pretty small and you playing that position, and you know it wasn't it wasn't like what it is now. I mean, I see a lot of scat backs, a lot of flankers. Or, you know, it's a lot of guys in the league that that still fit kind of the stature of myself now. But or during that time, it was really big guys playing those positions. So the likelihood of getting to the league for me was a you know, lot slimmer than it is now, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. But, man, you got it. I don't want to, you know, I don't want you to gloss over the fact that you were a heck of a tailback, man. Like, the, is it is it true that you still own the Russian record at your old high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got the Russian record at the school. I mean, I, I don't think nobody broke the re- Russian record that that I, that I know of. Like, you know, I, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I still got the Russian record. Um, it's a, it was a few, it was a few different people that came close. It was some guys that was before me that was real nice too. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, I, I did my thing for sure. Now you come from a city called Tarpon Springs, Florida. Now, yeah. what was it like growing up in Tarpon Springs? It's very, uh, I guess multicultural. So, you know, you, you got, you got the neighborhood. I mean, just like pretty much every, everybody got, you know, their neighborhood sections and then, you know, you, you got the. The, the, I guess I won't say it's bougie, but you know, you got the, the straightforward section. And, but going to school, like we all came from different parts and we both kind of like bust together. So we mingled, you know what I mean? With, with, with some of everybody. I mean, I got a lot of friends that do a ton of other things. The parents had, you know, no money and, and, you know, they, they own houses and boats and boy well, yachts, you know what I mean? And, and franchises, you know what I mean? They, they did a thing like early. And, you know, I, I got friends that ain't really had nothing either. So, I mean, I blended in with, with, with both crowds. And, you know, you know, I, I, it was multicultural, if I could, you know, if I could say if there's anything. It sounds like a good setup for, for actually going out into the world because you're getting people from all different walks of life, it sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, it, you, you're in the neighborhood, though, you got your neighborhood. You there every day. The only time you really, you know, mingle with, with the other side is really at school. I think I think somebody that that kind of sparked my 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 same direction of interest on, on on like the school side and music side was like Ice Cube. I think he kind of went to a school that was similar to to like well he was he was brought up in a set and similar to you know mine when you got the neighborhood, but he went to school somewhere where it was it was mixed up. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. That's a good comparison, man. Because yeah. we saw in the movies there was the movie that talked about their life. That yeah, they he was actually being blessed out to a different type of environment, and it taught him different things and maybe how to move. Now, was that a benefit to you later on in the music industry? I mean, in in a, in a way, yeah, because you know, if you if you just 
focus strictly on neighborhood, it ain't really going to get you where you need to get to business wise. I think that to be able to adjust and put a, a business cap on at times, you know, and mingling with different folks that, that, that kind of, you know, help, you know, you can, you can speak proper to some folks and, and, and you know, not sound too crazy or corny and still stay true to your roots. You know what I mean? Because he, if you, if you sound too proper, they ain't really from the neighborhood, but you know what I mean? To them, they like, you know, I want to, I want to know you. I want to get to know where you from, what you, you know, what you bought or how you was raised or what have you. So, you know, they explain it to somebody and, and, and give them your terminology and slag on things. You know, that was, that piqued the interest for that, that crowd. So, you know, to go to the industry and the industry kind of be the same way, you know, during that time, like, you know, it's straight. You know what I mean? I feel like it helped a lot. Yeah, they got a word for that nowadays. They call it code switching, like being able to talk, <laughs> being able to talk in different environments and different yeah. backgrounds and things. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's slick. You know what I'm saying? That's and I can see in those boardrooms that helping a lot. And what as we get into your story, there were different ventures and things like that where I could see that would help out a lot because obviously you're a well-spoken cat. You're You're fairly smart. And you've done a lot of things and accomplished a lot. But man, let's actually get to some of those things and start start talking about the early days now what what can we be told about the bulldog entertainment owner that used to that used to run with you back in the days i guess he ended up getting locked up and going to the feds and yeah. i believe his name was p yeah 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 p p is uh uh you know uh, a latin cat you know what i mean he uh moved around he did his thing which you know was crazy with about p he was he was similar too he could get into some some different rooms and and, and be different too so you know uh but people was you know he, he, he was a g man he kept everything solid he introduced me to a lot of folks he showed me kind of the, the structure the hustle of of how this music thing could go you know what i mean and, and at the same time like it it was we were we, we hustling but we really trying to hustle to get somewhere. We ain't just hustling and pushing rounds on our cars and stunting big, you know, at the parties or whatever. But we really trying to do something else. And when, you know, he applied that. A lot of dudes that I see, you know, in my neighborhood, they 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 just stunning for the neighborhood. They really weren't trying to really go nowhere. If they did, they did it to you know, the niggas in the neighborhood. They didn't do it to take that and really go somewhere else. So I think that he applied that in my mind frame on how, how the game should be. Like, if you're going to get you some money, get you some money, but this ain't long-term. This is just for you to get some money and, you know what I mean, go try to do something else with that money. So, uh, I mean, big, big up to P, man. You know what I'm saying? P, I, shit, he, he, he doing his thing. I'm not sure exactly what he doing. You know what I mean? I, I'm sure he's doing his thing, though, because, you know what I mean, he, he, he a real smart cat. So, I mean, I know, I know he's free, though. I mean, so some folks that, you know, got at me or whatever when he got, got loose and, you know what I'm saying, he, it was free. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, out of all the, all the that was around when we was doing this, shit, you, he, you ended up being the one. And I wasn't even really focused on the music like that when I was around them. I was just focused on the, the, the money. Shit. Phone was ringing there. That shit was jumping. I was just trying to get to the bag. I, the music was cool, but I didn't see the vision of how that was actually going get us out the neighborhood. I was just like, man, I'll try to get some money. Shit, them niggas get money. They, they ride Escalades. They, they, man, I, I, I gotta give me some money. I gotta hang with these dudes right here. They moving and shaking. So that's kind of what it was for me and my mom. But he introduced me to BG. You know what I mean? He, he put me in, uh, uh, me and BG did a record together early days. You know what I mean? The cash money side. So early, 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 before I even went to the, the cash money, I had already had a rapport over there. And I was through P. Now, Wait, wait, P, is that, that was Bulldog Entertainment, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now at the same time that you guys were grinding it out, he ends up getting locked up, right? And mm -hmm. did you feel like that derailed your career in any type of way, or was that just another stepping stone? It, yeah, for, for a minute it did, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I, right when I got ready to be serious about it, you know what I'm saying? He went, he got locked up. So it was like, damn, like, I didn't really know how, you know what I mean? I was going to get in the, the, the position because I, I was there with them, meeting everybody, but I was just, I was the youngest nigga around them. So it was kind of like, he's just with us. That's just my little dog or whatever. Like, shit, we, he just rolling the weed up. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? He, he got some music, but. I wasn't the focus point. I mean, this, this cat uh, named Chico Red was the focus point. So, like, I was just there, and I was always added with them. Like, man, look, I want to get in. Put me on this record or let me do it. You know what I'm saying? So 
I wasn't really there yet. So when he went and, and I kind of was starting to feel a good vibe on the, on the music tip, like knowing, okay, this is something that I really want to do being that, you know, school is out and, and ain't nothing really going on. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, going in the direction with, with, with P was what I wanted to do. So when he fell, it was like, it, it took me a second to kind of figure out what I wanted to do, but the relationships that was established with, with, with Peachy, uh, at, at the studio, I mean, at, at, at the, at the barbershop, or it was this dude Peachy had, had a barbershop and, you know, this dude Rich had a studio, um, in Tampa and then, you know, me and, uh, Rated R and, 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 you know what I'm saying, uh, Kaya and, you know what I mean? Tampa Tony, you know what I'm saying? Ned with Gigantic Entertainment and Tom G. Like, to meet all of them through, you know what I'm saying, the backside of P and really understood that this was the culture of what was moving in Tampa. Because for me, growing up at the time, you know what I'm saying? 16, 17, you know, running around and shit with them, the, the Tampa was far. That shit was like uh, another world of us. And that shit only like 30, 45 minutes away from, from the crib. But at that time, that shit was far. That was like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas say he going to Tampa. They're like, man, the fuck a nigga live in Tampa? A nigga move to Tampa, you might never see him again. Well, you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like real shit. Like, it was like, it was too far. It was like, so for me to come from this little small area and go over there and know them, them cats and be able to maneuver, that was just different. You know what I mean? So he opened me up to a lot of different shit. 